There's a... Uh, like I said, you can see the other aircraft, so that's pretty much all I was doing was talking to them so we knew where each other were. When it gets... When the visibility gets a little spotty like that, we just... Gotta keep in touch. As long as we're talking to one another, we can make that work perfectly. This is one of the most watched volcanic uh, areas in the world. With all the volcanoes and the volcanic activity, the volcanologists and geologists are constantly watching this thing. And really one of the main ways to know is through volcanic is through uh, earthquakes and things of that much, or that nature. But they're definitely monitoring these things uh, more so than any other volcanoes. So if they if they believe one's going to go, they, they know. Okay. I'm back with you folks. And we're on our way. We're going to make our way up the coastline here. The beautiful Hamakua coastline of Big Island, Hawaii. How many of you birds are up at one time? Um, we have seven helicopters at our base, and they're usually up, all, at least six of them are up at a time. And then they have another five helicopters that fly out of Hilo for our company, and they're usually all up all the time. We keep pretty busy. Okay, so one thing you're going to notice along this coastline as we make our way is it is pretty much devoid of any beaches. It's a 40 mile stretch of beautiful coastline, not a single beach out here. You won't see another beach until we get to the Waipio Valley, which is like I said, 40 miles away. This is the, the coastline where all the sugar cane that was grown in Hawaii was grown along. Pretty much this whole stretch of coastline all the way up was back in the mid, to, and pretty much the entire 1800s, all the way up to the early to mid 1900s, was all sugar cane, sugar cane farms, plantations. As we all know, sugarcane was a cash crop of Hawaii. Everyone you knows Hawaii sugarcane. But here on the Big Island, after the tsunami of 46 wiped out the railroad system that used to run along the bluff here, the sugarcane industry started to take a tumble after that. That and along with unionization of workers after World War II and uh, this declining, the declining uh, Sugarcane economy is just the, the demand. There just wasn't as much money in it, and it slowly started dwindling out. And finally, in the mid 90s, mid 1990s, sugarcane industry here on the Big Island of Hawaii ceased to exist. Waipu Valley here? Yep, this is the Waipio Valley, also referred to as Valley of the Kings. And they call it that, or they say that they call it the Valley of the Kings because this is where King Kamehameha and his predecessors used to live. Now we're going to make a big S turn out here in front. 
But we won't actually go into this valley. There's about 60 residents who actually live in the valley. So out of respect for them, we don't fly into it. Now you actually can go into the valley. If you look on the side of the wall there, there's a big cut in it. And that's a road that takes you down the valley floor. It's about a 25% grade the whole way down. And once down there, there are companies that offer ATV tours. There's companies that offer horseback riding tours. At one point in time, they estimate that there may have been over 10,000 residents living in this valley. That was mainly during the uh, sugarcane boom in the 1800s. So the next valley we're going to go, that's coming up right here on our left, is Waimanu Valley. This is one of my favorite valleys. This is one we actually are going to go into. I think you all will really enjoy the Waimanu Valley. I said one of my favorites. And I always joke with people that if you have tissues, this is the time to get them out.
it be an evening star shines down upon you may it be It be the shadows call will fly away. May it be your journey. I hope everybody's enjoying this so far. It's really beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was the Waimanu, that big waterfall that was in Waimanu there. That's, uh, that's how it, Wahili Lao, and why, or Wahili Lao, sorry, and Wahili Lao is actually the 26, 2600 feet tall, it's actually the 13th tallest fall in the world. The waterfall before that, that we circled around, is what we call, is what is known as the Wahili Kai. Now we're coming up here on the Honokona Nui Valley, starting from the right, to our left, and the next one will be Polo Lu. Now, if you look at the very far valley, like I said, the last next one over Polo Lu, followed all the way down to the mouth. On this far side wall, you'll see what looks like a clear-cut area. There's actually a road that goes right up to there. There's a overlook that you can go to, and a trail that you can take that takes you down to the Black Sand Beach at the bottom.
So what we're flying over right now, this is actually the Parker Ranch. This is a historic ranch that was started in 1847. At one time, it covered 500,000 acres of the Big Island. Now it's only about 150,000, yeah, it's about 150,000 acres now. I guess they found that it's more profitable to actually sell or lease their land than it was to try to uh, ranch cattle on it. Okay, we're going to start making our way back towards Waikoloa now. Now as we come off of this ridge line, you may feel a few bumps here and there. I don't, not anticipating anything to be concerned about, but just to give you, just give you a heads up, you might feel a few. Okay, we're going to start making our way along the shore, or not along the shoreline, but back towards like low, and then you'll see some nice pretty beaches coming into view here momentarily. The beach right there on the right, that is the largest white sand beach inside of the island. Really nice if you're just looking for a nice gentle surf to kind of hang out and splash around in. But if you're looking for, you know, more than that, if you're looking for snorkeling or something else to do, this next beach where you see that parking lot and all the trees, that's actually Beach 69. It's actually a shaded beach. There is a sandy beach there underneath all those trees. Now at this point I want to say thank you or send a giant mahalo to all of you for coming out and flying with us today, flying with me, Benita, Robert, or Bob, and Drew and, or Dean and Bill, and then Glenn and Ophelia behind me. I hope you all had a really good time. I hope you enjoyed it and got to see what you're hoping to see. At this point we are going to make our way back down and just like in Hilo, once we're on the ground, just hang out. I'll let you know when it's safe to take your seatbelts off. I'll let you know when... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get the doors for you, or my loaders will get the doors for you. So again, don't need to do anything there. And once on the ground, we'll make our way up to Lanai. Now, once on the, and on the Lanai, if you feel so inclined, we do have an e-guest book and comment cards if you feel like leaving a comment, either positive or negative. I just remind you, if it's positive, my name is Jay. If it's negative, you can use any name you like. Other than that, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your trip, your safe travels home. If you feel like you're coming back out to the Hawaiian Islands, look us up. I see trees of green, red roses too, I see them blue.
about me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful world I see skies of blue And clouds of white The bright blessed day The dark sacred night And I think to myself What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow They learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful world Yes, I think to myself Welcome back. 